So, hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Paul. Thanks. Good to chat to you again. Good, good. Well, Tom and I decided because we know we're we're so unimdated with work during these times that we're going to make these bite-sized analysis things. Yeah, we're going to focus on one tiny area, um, overkill that area in the space of ten to fifteen minutes, and then move on. That was the plan, wasn't it, Tom? That's the plan. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Ten hours later. Less, less in, less is more. Yeah. <laughs> less is more. Do less. <laughs> we're going to keep to that. Um, we we keep coming back to these myths, Tom, um, regarding things like um these cues and things you hear. And I think most ski instructors get around this component of speed and they go, oh, speed is your friend. And this may be true, um, but this essential component is perhaps misunderstood. And I think ski instructors, again, need to know why speed is your friend so they can sell that to the client because the client doesn't get that because most people and I had a conversation with a client just the other day there for an hour and it was all at a time kept mentioning I need to control my speed in the bumps how do I skid and how do I control and of course trying to tell people speed is your friend and why becomes a big issue and we know if we think of speed as something that supports me and helps maintain equilibrium we can find out more about that again on um, your big picture skiing, yeah? Is this right, Tom? Yeah, yeah. I've done I've done some different uh, lectures and topics on like what you put up there, the centripetal force, like that force that comes uh, that's pushing you pushing inside the turn. You feel it's pulling you outside the turn, and when you get it, when you get your head around that, it can really help you to then realize why you can't do what you just showed there um you know because because these motorcyclists the mountain biker yourself they're skiing that's they're all balanced very well at that point anyway against centripetal force and back to your speed comment centripetal force what helps make that higher so the force that's holding you up that doesn't mean you're sitting on your bum the biggest component is the is is the speed or acceleration because it's squared in that formula there it's squared so so you don't need to really know this formula but you need to know that the things that hold you up going around the corner the biggest one is speed and the second thing is is the radius so how tight a turn you're you're pulling yeah. so yeah you can definitely find out a bit more like well not a bit more quite a lot more from yeah. the videos on there yeah um, let, let, let's leave you to waffle we'll on about to that tom to... on on your big picture yeah, skiing yeah, exactly. and we look yeah. at the next example which Drew, Tom, and I, we were actually discussing on this one, Tom, uh, we were discussing the speed element in toppling, but then Tom and I said, hey, hang on a second, you know, look at what the guy's doing with his head is what we decided to focus on today. Yes, exactly. So, like, as you're watching this person come down, if you just tune your eyes into looking at the alignment or the position of the head, at various points in the turn, like right there, if you look at his goggles, they're tipped inwards, right? So his, so the line, there we go, perfect example across there, as opposed to being level with us looking at him, they're tipped inwards. And, and yeah, if we have a look at someone, who is that? You know? I have no idea because I know nothing about him. Um, uh, he's got a Red Bull on, helmet on, so he's obviously one of the, the top motor, uh, uh, GP guys. So. But look at his head, the motor guy, motocross, the motor um, GP guy, it's pretty much level, even though he's basically lying on his side. Yeah. yeah. It was incredible. And you go back to the guy, the skier, he's going nowhere near as fast, got nowhere near the same kind of angles, yet his head is tilted in. And, and that's going to really throw his balance, his inner ear vestibular system off in a big way. And if people have ever, ever tried this, like, ski down the hill and ski down the hill and deliberately tip your head like left and right as you turn it makes skiing very very difficult very very difficult so you've got a really good example here of, of a group so let's just have a look at uh look at the group versus the instructor 
So interestingly, again, Tom, we, we then looked at a group which has only got, um, you know, a, a half a dozen people in it. And we saw the same problem <laughs> as these people yeah. are skiing down compared with the trainer at the start. And, and to set it up as people are watching, like you said, this group are, are fairly decent. Yeah, you these know, are higher. They'd all have a crack at really trying to tip it over and carve, or else yep. they're to do more of a yep. demo turn here. But they're all pretty decent athletic skiers. Yet, you know, you could pick on like their banking in and skidding and stances off and all that sort of stuff, lots of things. But today, as a, a bit of a lens, we're looking at it in terms of the, the head position. How, how well is that sort of working? Because if that's not working right, then yeah, stay right there. Your balance is already completely off, okay? So yeah, I think that's really interesting, right? Like he's trying to get a sense of inclining into the turn by tipping his head. And if you're sitting here watching and you're sitting in your seat and you just let your head go side to side but keep your bum flat, you know, yeah, it feels like you're leaning into a turn, but unfortunately what you're doing is you're leaning in without the balance transferring all the way down through the spine, through the legs, into the feet. Yeah, and and as I said, I mean, we, ha we have looked at this in several, um, with several groups in the past, um, and people didn't actually apply much relevance to it. You know, you could see, um, students just going eh, whatever you know it's more important that yeah. I'm angulating that I'm getting ankle flexion and um, I'm, but hang on a second is this micro sense of the sport affecting the macro part and yes it is because we know from any other sport whenever whether you're cutting in basketball or whether you are um, a good example would be jujitsu, where you try to control somebody's head because you know that's going to manipulate them easier. So you can clearly see when you look at a world-class racer going round the gates, how they maintain that that axis and with their head and yep. don't end up tilting it in to such a point where a number of years back. It was discussed that the slightest movement of the head may assist you in tightening the turn. So they started to put that into racing. It's interesting yeah, in yeah. one group, Tom, if we take a group, we, we noticed that like the guy at the back, another one, I think we saw him making neck angulation. Here he is. Yep. This is a good example. We're looking at this guy there here. Yep. And we're yeah, looking at black, how... Yeah he is angulating his neck and again yes. tom maybe you can passionately explain the relevance of this to people because they're probably going what are those two talking about today and why yes well i thought i mean if i don't know if you can see me uh on your screen can you see me paul yep as a bit of a test like you know to experience it rather than just talk about it like if you practice uh, inclination, which which everyone should have in a ski turn, right? We're, we're moving in like this. If you practice it where you start from your head and your neck, what tends to happen is this overtakes and my bum and my hips, you can't see it, but they want to go that way. So I kind of go like that inside the turn, as opposed to falling against my wall and trying to keep my eyes level the whole time. Get really far away, fall, 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 fall. And, and I think that's a really cool experiment just to see focusing on this being level as the rest of your body topples over can actually give you quite, quite a natural looking, like angulated type position. So you can go eyes level, eyes level, eyes level, I end up getting these kind of natural look instead of as soon as my head tips, see, see my hips want to push out that way, my thoracic spine bends in this way, and already, like, yeah, trying to ski around with my head like that is, is very difficult. I've done that as a fun experiment to just show people how important getting the head uh, position correct is. And even just like this picture. Yeah, shows there's, there's a lot of inclination 
in the turn there by me, but my goggles are level. Yep. And, and, and it's not like I was thinking about it in that turn, but because I've got to a point where, you know, you and I both can do that in a ski turn, that's showing up. I bet you if we'd lost that, we'd probably be sliding out on our hip. Absolutely. So the, 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 the relevance of this to the ski instructor or skier looking in is to be aware that we can create angles, angulation from many different places. And again, on big picture skiing, you, you clarify this with the, from the subtalar joint to the knee joint to the hip joint. You can angulate your neck, your shoulders, my elbow anywhere where there's a joint and in fact in every part of the spine i could argue as well i can angulate and create angles so be aware of how disruptive it is or it could be in one group we see two people do it therefore ski instructors should be aware of it and not just dismiss it but actually focus on it do you have any ideas as to how you could help a student to say hey hang on a second are you aware that you're a bit floppy necked here yeah what would you maybe suggest to them i mean i guess the the first thing like like the guy leading the group one of is one of your trainers yeah how old is he? he he's just approaching 60. okay yeah so i'd imagine i'm just guessing but he's probably not gymnastics flexible or anything is he no 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 like maybe even a bit stiff <laughs> yeah i mean uh, gunny's gunny's a, a sporty guy but yeah probably not not more mo- mobility is probably not yeah so, so, so i guess my point is it doesn't like it, you don't have to have yoga like flexibility you don't even have to have full capacity possibly in your neck um, unless you're really pushing it but but the first thing i guess i would check is with those people, do they have any restrictions in their neck? Right? Yeah. So, so you'd want to check, you know, with, if you're in a group and you see this head tilting in like that guy in the blue, but he's he's not that old, is he in the blue? No, guy? no, he's only like 20. Yeah, so I doubt he's got some neck restriction, right? So that'd be the first thing. Just check you haven't got some with a fused cervical spine or something like that. Um, but if, if there's mobility there, it's actually quite simple. You can go around skiing. It looks odd, but you put your hands on your head and try and keep just, you know, try and be aware of keeping it level. And you'll even see your elbows, right, out of your peripheral vision as you move into a turn. You're just, you're going to, like, if that guy did it, he'd start realizing how much his head is tilting in. Yeah. You can do yeah. it with one. I've done it with poles. You can poles, yeah. Yeah, yeah you could do that kind of thing. Yeah. You could get your ski poles and hold it like like uh, two uh, antenna coming out the front yeah. like that. I've done that with groups of people, right? So so coming out this way. You just want to be creative. Just to the exercise would just need to be bringing awareness to this part of their body because they, they probably don't realise that they're doing that. And yeah. then that test I did against the wall, you know, can you just stationary against a snowbank incline without yeah. doing this with your head? I suppose it's like that one where they do um, two people either side of you on the piece and you just topple, yes. topple yes. and just try to feel how that happens. Also, yes. that, that, that brings us on to a new topic that I'd like to cover. But for today, I think that that's enough. And I think that people should go to big picture skiing, find out more details where you can really break this down with Tom. um, And that way you'll have more understanding of what you're talking about and not ignore these small things that sometimes are only obvious to the trained coach's eye, Tom, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So hopefully today we've just helped you have another lens to look at skiers. You know, yes, there's all these other things going on, but then also what about the head? So it's definitely very important because of the inner ear and the balance system. So yeah, I hope people enjoyed it. Good luck. See you soon, Tom. Bye for now. Thanks. Talk soon, Paul.